A message to a missing father. Our mother's starting to worry about you, they say. The little ones are certainly missing him too, constantly wondering where he's gone. They're always asking me, Mom, when is that coming home? Telling me, Mom, I miss that so much. Insaf Haider struggles to answer her three children. How can she tell them their dad has languished in a Saudi prison for almost a year? That she doesn't know when or if he'll return. Haider tells me her husband, Raif Badawi, just wanted to encourage discussion about religion in his homeland. But starting a liberal internet forum in conservative Saudi Arabia can be a dangerous pursuit. The Saudis have granted pardons to fundamentalists, to terrorists, to people who've done things who deserve to be punished. Raif didn't do anything wrong. Still, the activist was accused of, among other things, breaking Sharia law, charged with starting a website that infringed on religious values. He was summoned to numerous court hearings, but on principle, Badawi refused to show up. Actually, no one wants to, to take his uh, case because they believe that uh, anyone who takes this kind of, uh, of cases, that means he destroys his reputation. Lawyer Walid Abu Khair did take on Badawi's case. He's his brother-in-law and also a fellow human rights activist on trial in Saudi Arabia. Abu Al Khair faces his own charges of speaking to the foreign media with the, quote, intention of harming the country's reputation. He says any activist calling for reform in Saudi Arabia is in danger of being arrested. Rights groups agree. Just last month, two of the country's most prominent reform advocates were sentenced to 10 years in prison apiece. Amnesty International called that trial just one of a troubling string of court cases aimed at silencing the kingdom's human rights activists. Despite repeated attempts, CNN was unable to reach Saudi Arabia's justice ministry for comment. Abu al Khair says his client is being prosecuted and persecuted. Uh, they didn't punish just him. They punished his family. They, they, actually, they punished uh, their future. Which is why Haider moved her children to Lebanon. Back home, the stigma was too strong. It often feels like the world is against me. And when I see how the children are deprived of their father, this is what bothers me the most. Estranged and alone, Haider can only wait. Her children's questions become more pressing as she grows more desperate. Mohammed Jamjoum, CNN, Beirut.